Hello and welcome to the Following Truth Bible Study on YouTube. I'm your host, LJ. And in this video, we're going to be looking at the Assumption of Mary. Now, the Catholic Church teaches dogmatically that Mary, the mother of Jesus, who they called the mother of God, was assumed into heaven bodily. The Catechism of the Catholic Church states, 966, Finally, the Immaculate Virgin, preserved free from all stain of original sin, when the course of her earthly life was finished, was taken up bodily and soul into heavenly glory and exalted by the Lord as queen over all things, so that she might be the more fully conformed to her son, the Lord of Lords and conqueror of sin and death. 508. The Assumption of the Blessed Virgin is a singular participation in her son's resurrection and an, and an anticipation of the resurrection of other Christians. In giving birth, you kept your virginity. In your dormition, you did not leave the world, O Mother of God, but were joined to the source of life. You conceived the living God, and by your prayers will deliver our souls from death. Now, the church claims that after Mary died, she was resurrected from death and was then assumed into heaven in her earthly body. It must be noted that the teaching that Mary did in fact die has not been decreed dogma. Some in the Catholic Church teach that Mary did not in fact die. Rather, she was simply assumed into heaven before she died, while others attest to her death, resurrection and then bodily assumption. Those that say that she did die do not agree on where she died. Some say Jerusalem and some say Ephesus. However, although the teaching of her death is not church dogma, the church does decree that Mary was assumed into heaven, but it is only the bodily assumption of Mary that is considered dogma. Every year, the church celebrates a feast of her assumption into heaven on the 15th of August. This date is the most common, however. It must also be noted that the date and length of the feast does vary in different countries. The feast was originally known as the Feast of Dormition, or Falling Asleep. The earliest documented attestations of this feast come from the 4th and 5th century. The Feast of Dormition was officially accepted into the Eastern Church in 588 AD by Emperor Maurice, who commanded that it be celebrated on the 15th of August. The Western Church accepted the feast in the later part of the 7th century under Pope Sergius I. The terminology was later changed in the 8th century to commemorate the bodily assumption into heaven rather than her death the feast now being known as the Feast of the Assumption. It must be further noted that it was not until 1950, some 19 years, uh, 1900 years at or so after the event, that this was made church dogma by the Catholic Church when Pope Pius XII defined the Assumption as church dogma on the 1st of November 1950. Anyone who is remotely familiar with the Bible should notice the very striking similarities of this teaching to that of Jesus. Jesus died, uh, and after he died, was resurrected, and then 40 days later ascended into heaven. Mary's assumption, however, the Catholic Church claims, differs from that of the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, because while Jesus ascended to heaven through his own power, Mary required God to take her. Unlike the very biblical story of Jesus, which can be found clearly depicted in the Bible, the story of the death, resurrection and subsequent assumption of Mary cannot. The last mention of Mary in the Bible is in the book of Acts chapter 1, where she can uh, be seen or it is stated that she is seen praying with other disciples at Pentecost. Scripture is then silent about the rest of her life and her death. The Assumption of Mary is a Catholic Church teaching that has been revealed through the authority of the Catholic Church, a fact that Pope Pius XII himself called upon in uh, the Apostolic Constitution uh, in his defining of the doctrine as dogma. 
In his writing, Pope Pius XII claimed that Mary's bodily assumption would be defined by the church's supreme teaching authority. Uh, number six, thus, when it was solemnly proclaimed that Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, was from the very beginning free from the taint of original sin, the minds of the faithful were filled with a stronger hope that the day might soon come when the dogma of the Virgin Mary's bodily assumption into heaven would also be defined by the church's supreme teaching authority. He appealed to the written word, but also to tradition for the revelation of all things that are to be believed. 12. Thus, from the universal agreement of the church's ordinary teaching authority, we have a certain and firm proof demonstrating that the Blessed Mar Virgin Mary's bodily assumption into heaven, which surely no faculty of the human mind could know by its own natural powers, as far as the heavenly glorification of the virginal body of the loving mother of God is concerned, is a truth that has been revealed by God and consequently something that must be firmly and faithfully believed by all children of the church. For as the Vatican Council asserts, all those things are to be believed by the divine and Catholic faith which are contained in the written word of God or in the tradition and which are proposed by the, Catholic, uh, the church, either in solemn judgment or in its ordinary and universal teaching office as divinely revealed truths which must be believed. When it comes to the assumption of Mary, there simply is no written word although some biblical verses are appealed to as support, such as that both Enoch and Elijah were assumed into heaven, and so the church claims that this is a biblical evidence that it is possible. However, both of these assumptions are also recorded in the Bible, and if you read my writings on those, they give a much clearer uh, answer to what those actually mean uh, and they don't mean what the Catholic Church actually uses them to support. Uh, and neither Enoch nor Elijah were resurrected from death. It must be uh, important to point that out. Now the whole doctrine defined as dogma is reliant almost entirely on tradition. The revelationary uh, uh, revelatory I should say, authority of the church. We are told in scripture not to be spoilt by the tr tradition of men. Colossians 2.8. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Now, Pope Pius XII continued to appeal to the authority of the church by our the church's authority, the church defines and declares the assumption of Mary as divinely revealed dogma. 44. For which reason, after we have poured forth prayers of supplication again and again to God, and have invoked the light of the Spirit of truth for the glory of Almighty God, who has lavished his special affection upon the Virgin Mary for the honor of her Son, the immortal king of the ages and the victor over sin and death for the increase of the glory of that same august mother and for the joy of exaltation of the entire church by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul and by our own authority we pronounce, declare and define it to be divinely revealed dogma that the Immaculate Mother of God, the ever-Virgin Mary, having completed the course of her earthly life, was assumed bodily and soul into heavenly glory. It therefore <coughs> must be already believed that God reveals truth through the Catholic Church and that they have the authority to, to develop doctrines and make them dogma. 
So in order to accept the assumption of Mary as dogma, you must first accept the authority of the church to declare such revelation through the church and define it as dogma. Furthermore, Pope Pius XII stated that denial of the dogma is decreed as having fallen away completely from the divine and Catholic church. 45. Hence, if anyone, which God forbid, should dare willfully to deny or to call into doubt that which we have defined, let him know that he has fallen away completely from the divine and Catholic church. To not believe this doctrine as truth is to no longer be part of the Catholic church. Pope Pius XII continued that the wrath of Almighty God will be on anyone that tries to challenge the declaration. 47. It is forbidden to any man to change this. Our declaration, pronouncement and definition, or by rash attempt to oppose and counter it, if any man should presume to make such an attempt, let him know that he will incur the wrath of Almighty God and of the blessed apostles Peter and Paul. The Bible rather states that if it is God's word that should not be added to. Proverbs 35. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. There is no scripture where this teaching can be found. Therefore, it is the teaching of the Assumption of Mary itself that has been added to the words of God. We are told that all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for doctrine, 2 Timothy 3.15, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, through thoroughly furnished unto all good works. The assumption of Mary is not found in scripture, and so the scriptures are not profitable for this doctrine. It therefore cannot be used unto good works. Yet the Bible is clear that the man of God is thoroughly furnished or equipped unto all good works through that which is given by the inspiration of God and that being the scriptures. It is through scripture that doctrine should be found and decreed. It is the scriptures that proclaim the truth. This has been attested to by many of the early church. Athanasius, for example, against the heathens 1.1. 1, 1. The holy and inspired scriptures are sufficient of themselves for the preaching of the truth. In these alone, the school of piety preaches the gospel. Let no man add to these or take away from them. The 39th uh, Festal Letter. Also, Irenaeus against Heresies, Book 3. We have learned from none others the plan of our salvation than from those through whom the gospel has come down to us, which they did at one time proclaim in public, and at later period, by the will of God, handed down to us in the scriptures to be the ground and pillar of our faith. Now, uh, I should also just here put uh, up Gregory of Nice Nyssa. Uh, and also Cyril of Jerusalem, Augustine, Hippolytus, and you can pause this video and have a look and read those uh, for yourself. You cannot teach the truth of the assumption of Mary from Scripture because it simply is not there in Scripture. The doctrine which has been defined as dogma is therefore a non-biblical doctrine. 
This doctrine, this teaching, also cannot be found in any of the writings of the apostles. Paul never, not even once, even alluded to the death of Mary, let alone her assumption bodily into heaven. This doctrine was not taught by any of the apostles. Neither was it taught by any of the early church fathers. Many of them wrote about Enoch and Elijah, yet none of them, not one, wrote about Mary. They didn't mention anything about the Assumption of Mary, which would have been a far more important event, I would have thought. Now, the Assumption of Mary just wasn't taught by the Apostles or the early church. That's just fact. They never mentioned it, which is quite surprising if it is true and it is to be celebrated as such, this would be something worthy at least noting, especially as the church proclaims it as dogma and having to be believed. It isn't as if they simply just don't go into detail about it. There is a stonewall silence on this doctrine for centuries after it. The fact is, however, the first witnesses we have for the Assumption is in the 4th or 5th century, as I've said, and it's in the Apocryphal Gospel. The Transitu Mary, which was falsely ascribed to Saint Melito of Sardis. Gregory of Tours, the first person to speak on the Assumption, based his teaching on this writing. The trans, uh, Transitus, along with many other books, had already been condemned by Pope St. Uh, Galatius I in 459 AD as heretical writings. This was actually reaffirmed by Pope Hormistus uh, in the 6th century. These and those similar ones, which Simon Magus, Nicholas Serinthus, Marcion, Basildes, Ebion, Paul of Samosota, Photinus, and Bonosus, who suffered from similar error, also Montanus, with, the, with his obscene followers, Apillonaris, Valentinus, the Monarchion, Festius, the African, Sabelius, Arius, and uh, a whole host of others uh, whose names we have sincerely preserved, have taught or compiled, we acknowledge is to be not merely rejected, but eliminated from the whole Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church and with their authors and the followers of its authors to be damned in the inextricable shackles of anathema forever. The earliest witness to the Assumption of Mary, therefore, is at least 300 years after her death, and this witness was condemned by the Bishop of Rome. The writing is worthless for doctrine and is, and is valueless for actual history. Father Juniper Carroll uh, stated such. The account of Pseudo Melito, like the rest of the Transitus literature, is admittedly valueless as history, as an his historical report of Mary's death and corpor corporeal assumption. Under that aspect, the his historian is justified in dismissing it with a critical distaste. Epiphanius of Salamis, who lived in the 4th century, died very early in the 5th century, writing in the late 4th century, stated that the teaching is not found in scripture. He did not know if Mary had died or not. He highlights the silence of scripture on the event. This earliest mention of Mary's death, and at this point it is, simply is not known, what had happened to her. But if some think us mistaken, let them search the scriptures. 
They will not find whether she died or did not die. They will not find whether she was buried or was not buried. More than that, John journeyed to Asia, yet nowhere do we read that he took the Holy Virgin with him. Rather, Scripture is absolutely silent because of the extraordinary nature of the prodigy, in order not to shock the minds of men. For my part, I do not dare to speak, but I keep my own thoughts and I practice silence. For it may be that somewhere we have found hints that it is impossible to, to discover the death of the Holy Blessed One. On the other hand, you see, Simeon says of her, and your own soul a sword shall pierce, and the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed, Luke 2.35. On the other hand, when the apocalypse of John says, and the dragon hastened against the woman who had brought forth the male child, and there were given to her an eagle's wings, and she was carried off into the wilderness, that the dragon might not seize her. Acts 12, 13, four, uh, 13 and 14. It may be that this is fulfilled in her. However, I do not assert this absolutely, and I do not say that she remained immortal, but neither do I maintain stoutly that she died. The fact is, scripture has outstripped the human mind and left this matter uncertain. For the sake of that valued vessel, without compare, to prevent anyone from harboring carnal thoughts in her regard. Did she die? We do not know. At all events, if she was buried, she had had no carnal intercourse. The uh, Panarion medicine chest against heresies. According to St. John of Damascus in the 5th century at the Council of Chalcedon, uh, Chalcedon in 451, Roman Emperor uh, Marcion requested the body of Mary, mother of God, St. Juvenal, who was Bishop of Jerusalem, replied that Mary died in the presence of all the, the apostles, but that her tomb when opened upon the request of St. Thomas, was found empty. Wherefrom, the apostles concluded that the body was taken up to heaven, the saint recorded. Catholicnewsagency.com However, we have no writings from any of the apostles that make this claim. None of the apostles stated that Mary died in their presence. Neither did any claim that they had concluded that her body had been taken to heaven. There is no record support. Uh, there is no recorded support for this claim. Even if her body was not found, this wouldn't be default, uh, meaning that Mary had been taken to heaven in her body. As we have already seen, the earliest attestation states that nobody knows what happened to Mary, at least not where she was buried. To claim that Mary was assumed into heaven, while in of itself uh, cannot be viewed as fundamentally wrong, it is possible, although through historically recorded evidence highly doubtful, remains a non-biblical teaching. What therefore is wrong is to teach it as dogma and proclaim that it is blasphemous not to believe it. The doctrine of the assumption of Mary is nothing more than the appeal of the Catholic Church to its own authority. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope it was useful. Please subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help my channel. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Shalom.